Hello friends, let's discuss today's set of current affairs. Here's the first question. Where is it? Yeah, it's here. Which of the following statements is are true with respect to the RTGS system? Now, we in the past have had, um, you know, discussed NEFT and uh, today's turn is that of uh, RTGSS. Uh, okay. So, when say RTGSS, uh, the S in the end is not S. It is sound of S. That is, it belongs to RTGS. Okay. So, RTGS here is stands for the real-time gross settlement. It's already mentioned and most everything is right there. So, I'm going to give you more and in terms of, you know, we will take a structured approach to this. Please write. Just the way we wrote for NEFT, we will also write for RTGS. Please start writing down. Okay. First one. Um, you take the full form RTGS real time gross. How do we pronounce this? This is uh, you know gross. We normally say gross, but it is gross. So it has different meanings in different contexts. Like for example, in the case of um, you know um, uh, volume, it would be if you say one gross, it's twelve dajan. That's one forty four units. So in normal basha, uh, normal language, gross would mean outstandingly bad. Okay, if you say something, it's oh, it's gross. It means it's really, really bad. And uh, in another volume terms, it also means you know uh, total. So when you say gross domestic product, total value of the domestic product. So yes, in this context, it's a total thing basically. Okay, real time gross settlement. So you know we write the full form, and then the first point. Funds transfer, funds transfer from one account to another, from one account to another on a real time, on a real time, on a real time and gross basis, real time and gross basis. So let's explain what is real time, what is gross. Okay, next point. Settlement is real time. Settlement in real time. Settlement in real time means means payment transactions. Payment transaction. Let's take it singular. Let me repeat. Settlement in 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 a real time means payment transaction is not bunched together is not bunched together and is not subjected and is not subjected to any waiting period to any waiting period in fact you could have you could also write settlement in real time means um, transaction is not subject to any waiting period full stop next gross settlement gross settlement mm -hmm. means the transaction mm -hmm. is settled the transaction is settled on one to one basis on one to one basis without being without being bunched bunched with other transactions with other transactions full stop next point both the beneficiaries beneficiary i'll write the word here both the beneficiary beneficiaries and receivers okay um, no I think uh, beneficiary is the same I'm so sorry guys um, I don't know how this worked okay um, both the originator the one who is sending the you know money both the originator and beneficiary beneficiary originators and beneficiaries account accounts 
have to be RTGS enabled. RTGS enabled. So if you're sending to your friend some amount to RTGS, your account as well as your friend's account has to be have to be both the accounts have to be RTGS enabled. Next, minimum amount is minimum amount is rupees two lakh is rupees 2 lakh while while there is no upper limit there is no upper limit full stop next point highly useful highly useful in situations in situations where businesses where businesses and I am writing in caps okay uh, my writing as you know handwriting is where businesses and individuals require immediate settlement of high value funds high value funds I value funds full stop last point this is the most popular this is the most popular medium of online fund transfer online fund transfer because of its efficiency because of its efficiency comma speed and reliability and reliability mm -hmm. and reliability so see normally in NEF transactions as we saw in the previous session you know transactions are bunched and they are sent every half hour okay there are between let's say 10 a.m and 10 30 there are four different transactions and these are not you know the the, the sender has chosen neft neft mode this simply means all these four transactions will be bunched together and sent at 10 30 okay but in the case of rtgs you know if the person has selected RTGS mode, it simply means that the money would be sent immediately as a separate transaction. Okay, the fund transfer happens as a separate single transaction. No bunching happens. This is fast. This is very efficient also. And the fact that uh, this is a single transaction would attract fee. Banks charge money for this. Okay, but in, uh, NEFT is free, you know, RTGS is fee oriented. That is, there is a certain charge on this particular kind of transaction. Okay, in the next session, we'll look at IMPS, Immediate Payment Service. So, we already looked at, uh, you know, NEFT and the second one, RTGS today. So, let's go, let's get on with this and let's look at the next one. What according to Fortunes? Now, Fortune is a business magazine published from the United States, okay? Um, published in the United States, and of course, it's a global, it's quite famous actually. There are two major magazines one is Forbes, the other is Fortune, that come from the same company. Now, please understand there are other business magazines like Business Week, Bloomberg Business Week, then there is a Bloomberg itself, you know. If you go to Bloomberg.com, you get great stuff, of course, it requires subscription also. And the most favorite, uh, my most favorite is Wall Street Journal. Okay, you go to WSJ.com, you find a lot of stuff. Often free, there is a set number of articles you can read for free. Uh, I mean, per month that are free, but generally requires subscription and it's quite expensive also. Then there is this famous magazine called Economist.com. Economist is a bit tough actually um, you know it's quite expensive also and typically it is um, um, you know a liberal very liberal kind of magazine which is seriously anti 
um, you know, you would say you could say that it's it's quite anti BJP magazine. Okay, so but then different newspapers, different you know viewpoints. So I read everything. It just gets me a different view perspective from everything. Now, one of you had reached out to me through some social media platform and asked me how do I go about reading a newspaper. Now, reading a newspaper is a very simple thing. And before I go there, I would tell you a little about this question itself. Okay. I got a Fortune's uh, 500 largest corporations in the United States. Which company is the biggest? Well, the answer is Walmart. It's always been the biggest, uh, you know. Walmart for the last at least nine years it's been the biggest so you could write this um, you know fortune 500 United States fortune 500 United States underline that so one Walmart okay two Amazon three Apple for CVS Healthcare or CVS Health, it's already mentioned. I know it's mentioned, but I normally like to write. Okay, United Health is in the fifth place. These are all by volume of sales, sales revenue, man. These are huge companies. Okay. Now, uh, how big is Walmart? To just give you an idea, Walmart is, um, you could say, defined as a general merchandise company but you know Walmart is like our super department store Reliance Fresh you have um, Big Bazaar that kind of store okay now how big is Walmart globally you know its sales last year so the, the fiscal year in America typically ends on January 31st I'm talking of the co corporate year okay this is a corporate year so by January 31st, 2021, Walmart sales were $559 billion. Okay, now how much is this money? It is 20% of India's GDP. You understand what I'm talking about? It is little more than 20% of India's GDP. It's huge. It's a massive company. And it's like, you know, your typical Kirana shop. Well, it's not a Kirana shop, of course. And... Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's also the world's biggest private sector employer. It employs about 23 lakh people. That's a huge number. 23 lakh people work for Walmart. Okay. So this is the world's biggest company. Now, Amazon is not a small pacha company also. You know, it's not a small company. Last year, its sales were about $386 billion. $386 billion. Amazon. Okay. And it's the world's biggest internet company. World's biggest internet company. If you look at just, uh, let me bring in Apple as well. Uh, last year, the sales were $274 billion. These are huge companies. Okay. To give you an idea, TCS last year made about $23 billion. You look at Walmart, compare that. You know, what Walmart makes in about 15, 20, 15 days, TCS makes in one year. Yeah, huge companies. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you these things. And I can tell you the names of the CEOs of the both uh, all the three companies as well, the top three companies. Okay. Um, Walmart, Douglas Macmillan, the CEO, Amazon, the new CEO will be Andy Jesse. Mm -hmm. Andy Jesse. Apple CEO is Tim Cook. Tim Cook. This guy usually wakes up at 3.45. He starts his official day at 4.30. He's in the office at 6 a.m. And... Uh, he is usually the, the first guy to come to the office and the last guy to leave the office. That's how they build great companies. That's how hard people work, my friends. Yeah. So that's a little about these companies and I hope you learned a few things. Yeah, work hard, my friends. Now, I was discussing newspaper reading like one of your friends had, one of our friends had reached out and she wanted to know how do we go about reading a newspaper. 
See, reading a newspaper is a bit of a boring task. Okay, I'll tell you this because um, for ages I've been reading newspapers. See, like uh, I started reading a newspaper when I was what about ten years old. Because that was a habit at home in those days. I saw my elders doing this, so I also picked it up. Now, most of us don't these days don't read newspapers. We looked it up on our you know news is app based. All every all kinds of news is app based. We just use apps. No, it is good to use apps, but it's much more important to use a newspaper. I mean, feel a newspaper. So, how do you go about learning using a newspaper? I would always suggest that you pick. any page in the newspaper any page you look at the front page business affairs page sport gossip whatever like you like no issue i mean it's a personal choice you make okay what you do is spend 4 minutes on a page of your choice 4 minutes 4 minute 4 minute how do you spend 4 minutes well um spend 1 minute in reading titles of stories titles of stories i mean you just read titles okay 38 killed in bus accident in x country prime minister of you know you know uh, was a benjamin netanyahu loses prime minister post you got it so you read titles when you read a title it makes you aware it makes you aware when what is happening what's happening is very very important okay now you don't have to read all the stories spend 1 minute in reading titles of stories and then pick one story on the front page and read it for 2 to 3 minutes no newspaper story takes more than 3 minutes that's how they are designed so 1 minute the first 1 minute in titles just make yourself familiar with what's happening then pick one story read it for 2 to 3 minutes and whenever you read something whenever you learn something you should tell yourself two things one that i may not understand everything two that i may not remember everything okay now it is universal that we don't understand everything and we don't remember everything there are you know different comfort levels for different subjects So if you ask me about mathematics, I have zero understanding of it. Okay, do you ask economics, physics? I'm pretty comfortable with this. I'm comfortable with you know um, philosophy. I'm not comfortable with something like chemistry. Got it? So there are different comfort levels for different subjects. Within a subject, you have your own favorite area. So whatever you you like to read, please tell yourself that you may not understand everything. You may not remember everything. with that you start reading mm-hmm. sentence 1 you read okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. continue to read even if you don't understand much of the stuff end of those 3 minutes you would find that while you might not have understood everything and you might not be able to recall you might not recall everything you still would have got some basic idea yes in 3 minutes can you not get some basic idea of what you have read you certainly can Now you may not remember everything, all the numbers that we quoted. Uh, Amazon's, um, you know, uh, what we say, three eighty six. Apple's two eighty seventy four, and um, Walmart's five fifty nine. You may not remember all these numbers. You may remember, okay, Walmart. Walmart is um, named after the person who founded the company. Wal W A L Walton Sam Walton started the company. Martha, I mean market. Sam Walton gave his name to the company. Walmart. Now look at Amazon. Oh, Amazon! Amazon is named after the biggest, river, the most voluminous river in the world. Twenty-one percent of all river water is found in the river Amazon. Think like that. That's the volume of stuff they sell. That's how it is. Okay. Remember, my friends, what newspaper you read is a personal choice. What page you read is a personal choice. But whenever you read, you tell yourself that you may not understand everything. You may not remember everything. So it. Remember, you are preparing for a future. It's okay not to understand everything. It just doesn't matter. Okay. Now, I would like to tell you one more thing here that uh, a lot of people put themselves under pressure when they learn. Look, uh, there are a lot of things that are beyond our control. You know, uh, we barely have any control over anything in life except our own performance. Got it? So it's like you know, riding a two-wheeler. you are a good rider 
you should wear a helmet because you are a good rider you should wear a helmet because while you are a good someone else on the road may not be good if the other person runs into your vehicle you may get hurt and that's not fun so always budget for the fact that others are stupid that's how the world works okay it's good to be safe and it's good to be learning you know once you learn that you know you have to be it's your responsibility to be safe on the road you will be very careful so now you apply that learning to your life what's the best safe the safest way to build a future learn learning is the best way okay when i talk of tim cook please understand it's it's all hard work and he just see is an extreme he has been with amazon for the last 25 years more than 25 years extreme hard work these guys work for it anywhere between 18 and 20 hours every day please know that okay i mean this is how life is you got to work hard and when you say hard work it's about learning to repeat four minutes on a paper on a page of a paper any page four minutes one minute titles one story for two to three minutes that's it any newspaper of your choice i don't have a problem with that all newspapers are biased no nothing is true nothing is they they tell you what is true, what they think is true that doesn't have to be that you know so it's important to know the truth it's equally important to know the falsehood also so you need multiple things okay see whenever i prepare this for these kinds of questions what i do is i write down notes i write down notes and I keep that in the mind it's good to write down got it yeah now for this entire class i'll show you i have papers okay you see this for a blank papers you no know, blank paper complete blank papers but i have two lines i have written two lines 1 2 3 4 that's about it just two lines for the entire class this this is how we prepare this is how i prepare i believe that we can learn and read in a lot of stuff but sometimes it's difficult which is okay it is always okay but please put in effort okay my okay my friends see this life is going to be your if you work hard today and tomorrow okay <laughs> see you would want me to work hard in every class to give you stuff that you would look forward to that you may not understand but you would want your teacher to share that you know understanding with you that's what i'm doing so if you expect me to work hard you should work hard for yourself okay which of the following states in intelligence has occupied the highest grade which is grade a plus plus in the performance grading index uh, for you know uh, the last one 2019 20 with the ministry of education government of india well um, all five have been have occupied the highest grade but i would tell you a few things about this so if you are tomorrow you sit in an interview they ask you tell us something about this how do you look at education in india then you can bring in a few things you know for if you read this index i read that index so i brought a few things for you so please write it down okay right performance grading index what is it if you writing an essay it would help you okay on anything on education will help you performance grading index underline that right first point a tool a tool a tool t o o l tool to provide insights to provide insights on the status of on the status of school education in the status of school education in states in states and union territories including including key levers key k e y key levers we will discuss what are these levers key levers that drive that drive their performance their performance and and critical areas for improvement
critical areas for improvement i think i made i use the word in somewhere let me repeat a tool to provide insights on the status of edu school education in states and union territories including not in including key dr key driver key levers including key levers that drive their performance that drive their performance and critical areas for improvement and critical areas for improvement so it showcases critical areas for improvement below that second point five key levers five key levers so on what basis is grading done right five key levers underline that below that point a learning outcomes learning outcomes learning outcomes hmm? and quality learning outcomes and quality this is one you can write like this one two whatever okay b point b ah learning outcomes and quality if you want to know which state has top top in this you could write learning outcomes and quality in brackets rajasthan rajasthan top this list next point b access so to kids have access to education access in brackets punjab punjab top it punjab has done remarkably well you know in this particular thing number 3 or c infrastructure facilities infrastructure 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 in brackets punjab infrastructure relates to facilities kinds of you know blackboard toilets washrooms all that stuff okay four equity ha ah, this is an area that most people don't understand what is equity you can say equity also equity in brackets what is equity in brackets um comparative performance comparative performance of learning outcomes of learning outcomes comparative performance of learning outcomes of various categories of students of various categories of students in brackets like like rural versus urban rural versus urban comma general category versus reserved categories reserved categories so these are all parameters you will find in this they use these terms these are not my terms okay i don't believe in all these things so um equity is about comparative performance of learning outcomes you know, across different categories of students um, you know which is like urban how well are rural students doing versus urban students that's how it is okay last one e point e um map what is it governance issues governance issues governance issues or governance process both one and the same governance process so point a learning outcomes and quality b access c we talked of infrastructure for equity d uh, uh, sorry for a d equity e is governance now you could repeat punjab for everything b c d e so access punjab top you know infrastructure punjab top equity punjab top e governance punjab top punjab see governance relates to administration school you know governor management and uh, management of school administration and everything that's it management and school administration okay so punjab has done quite well but um, there are slight differences between these states but overall these states have done done quite well yeah you know, all of them have been rated rated grade a plus plus a plus plus 
So that's about it. I hope you know a few things now. Um, see, when you're talking of um, equity, remember that rural urban divide is real. Is real. In rural areas, the facilities available to students aren't as great as they are in, you know, um, uh, as they are available in urban areas. But within urban areas, it's not, you know, there are massive differences. You know, there is this top end school, which where the infrastructure facilities are very different from, you know, you know from schools um, at the bottom of, you know, in the urban areas. So within private schools and government schools, there are differences. You got it. So, and it also depends on to a large extent on the school management also, how efficient they are and all that. Now, not all private schools are good. Got it. Now, someone, uh, I once I was some in some session and someone said that, um, what's the difference between a public school and a government school? Aren't they same? No, they are not same. They are not same. Public sector is different from is not different from government sector. In economy, you know, in the case of the economy, public sector is the same as the government sector, government run companies we are talking of. But when it comes to education, public school, a public school is different from a government school. How different? See, a government school is owned by the government. Got it? A government school is owned by the government. A public school is owned by a public trust, typically a group of private individuals. And all these public schools are, have to be not-for-profit institutions. They cannot declare profit as an objective. Of course, they run for profit, but they cannot declare this. Okay. Another thing is, when they say public school, it is open to all members of the public, irrespective of the background. So there cannot be a discrimination on basis of gender, caste, religion, language, income, or whatever parameter they choose to use. You got it? So a public school, let's say, we call it, you know, Delhi public school, Hyderabad public school, Chennai public school. I don't know whether this ex Chennai public school exists or not. Let's call it um, India Public School. So, India Public School, Bharat Public School, is a, you know, it's owned by, it's privately owned, but it's run by a trust, like every school is run by a trust, technically. In this case, it's open to all members of the public. That's how it is. Whereas a government school is owned by government. Okay, yeah. So there is a huge difference between the fee <laughs> of a leading public school and a government school. You know, if you compare the fee, you will know what I'm talking about. And just to bring in a few things here, ah, there are a couple of, okay, I think that's fine. Who the following Formula One drivers won the 2021 Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Azerbaijan is um, a republic adjacent to Caspian Sea. Okay, it's a sheer dominant country. And, um, it was this race was held in a place called Baku. Have you heard of this place? It's a capital of Azerbaijan, Baku. Baku, and um, you know, I don't want to tell you about the name of the president. Ilham Aliyev is the president, but right now, not important. What we can do is the name, you know, we can take the top three guys. I mean, podium finishers, they are called. Top three are called podium finishers. So it was won by Sergio Perez. This is Sergio Perez and he has got a nickname also, Checo. Okay, Checo, that's his nickname. Where is he from? So what you would do is you write his name and then write the country he belongs to and the team he works for, you know, whose car he runs. So we have, what is this? Um, Sergio Perez dash Mexico dash he runs what is called, um, you know, um, Red Bull. You could write this. What is that? Uh, Red Bull. Racing. Honda. Red Bull Racing Honda. Okay. Hmm. And uh, one more thing. This guy used to 
run you know race for force india you must be familiar with the company a, a formula 1 racing team called force india was it force india it was owned by first by subrata roy of sahara group and later by vijay malya of uh, you know united breweries or king fisher as you would like to call got it and he holds world record sergio perez holds world record of racing 190 participating in 190 races before he won the you know won the race so you should never give up that's what it is telling us you should never give up okay so winner was this is a winner we can in fact you could write like this also winner this and second you could write okay second you write this name sebastian vettel sebastian sebastian vettel dash germany sebastian vettel germany okay he drives a beautiful car called aston martin which has a tie up with mercedes for the engine mercedes aston martin is this car you would find in james bond films new james bond films hmm? so vettel is from germany drives an aston martin mercedes and the third let me bring in the third guy um let me clear this first this is the third guy pierre gasly okay pierre gasly my friend uh, works you know he is um, so third ah pierre gasly he is from france gasly he is new he is coming to you know this thing is pretty what we say uh, i mean quite new to the centa racing thing and he drives an alpha tauri honda is alpha tauri racing honda simply write alpha tauri honda hmm that's enough yeah top three but follow this i love formula 1 and it's people work extremely hard look at this fellow you can learn a bit you know one or two things from this guy so one is that you should never give up and two that you should always be determined i mean you should always be positive about your chances and learn from every failure who has won the nature ttl photographer of the year uh, 2021 for a photo of, for a photo of an orangutan climbing clinging to a tree look at this um this is ulta you can see this actually is taken from the you know from the ground up and this is an orangutan orangutan is an endangered endangered species uh, in an ape uh, with quite long arms and everything but you know because of massive felling of trees and everything these animals are on getting homeless and which also means that you know they will become extinct soon if adequate protection is not provided um this was won by thomas vijayan i looked it up and i found this question from my colleagues this comes to me from my colleagues so i found this so i, I looked up the what is a photo and this was a photo amazing colors no yeah so this is looking at us and looking at us with a lot of request uh, you know pleading you know that please save us so humans have this remarkable intelligence to save others and because you know they cannot help you know we need to help them you understand this so when people say animals have rights you know what are animal rights animals don't have rights being bestowed on them by themselves animals have rights because we have bestowed on them in one sense that we can take care of them it is the right to is our duty animal rights is our duty to protect them you got it everyone has right to live for example but you know every time you see for example most of these trees in indonesia you know papua new guinea equatorial belt are being felled for palm oil cultivation which is very very profitable but then we need to protect the mass well hmm? 
oil as a substitute orangutans have no substitute <laughs> so with malik has been provisionally suspended after failing a dope test um, in the recent qualifiers in bulgaria bulgaria is a country in east europe this is a major embarrassment award okay um he participated he is a wrestler and this guy used to participate in this 125 kg category 125 kg category he has been disqualified he can't go to tokyo now for the olympics such a embarrassment for the country no doubt about it more important to think of you know see it's not true strength that is what it means it's not true skill people are using something or the other you know to beef up their to strengthen their performance which is not right so now i'm going to talk about olympic games so when you see please write um, write title olympic games first we'll write summer okay summer games um for a star mark for each bit we write this 2020 21 tokyo venues tokyo they were meant to be held last year but they have been pushed to this year of course and unlikely that things will go smooth this year because there is a considerable degree of opposition um you know in japan itself um, because of the games you know, japan is one of the most one of the least vaccinated developed countries just about 4% of japanese population is vaccinated and if you think india is doing bad you should know what japan is doing okay you just you need to look at canada also they have done pretty badly and they have small populations japan's population is 12.6 crore canada's population is 3.8 crore yet substantial even canada has inoculated only about 13% of its population that's a very small number for an entire country yeah ah uh, yeah 2024 we have paris 2028 it will be in america los angeles los angeles okay this is summer games now let's go to winter games let's clear this first we don't have much space so we'll have to clear this stuff winter olympic games winter we have only two 2022 beijing then we have 2026 in italy milan cortino non cortino cortina sorry cortina a a a please cortina now i also have something more for you why don't you write um, what is it youth olympic games i found this quite interesting actually youth olympic games um summer or what we say um 2022 2022 summer in dakar you know where is dakar it's a capital of a country called senegal africa 2024 it should be 24 because it's summer na yeah winter in a place called gangwon province south korea south korea theek hai cool yeah Ah, in the end, you could write one major thing, very important. Put it in the box kind of form. Okay, I'm <laughs> like that. I highlights, you know. Um, right. Beijing, Beijing, Beijing is the only city. Beijing is the only city to host. to host both the summer olympic both the summer olympic games and winter olympic games for the summer olympic games and winter olympic games so when you say summer you could write 2008 in a beijing hosted so just below summer you could write 2008 and winter 2022 so beijing is you know I mean, 
It's a mega city of goods. And the government of China is greatly interested in making China the world's number one sporting superpower. Got it? So I think that should be fine, my friends. That's a lot of information you've taken. Which global forum has recently reached a landmark deal to back a minimum global minimum tax of at least 15 percent on multinational corporations? You know, uh, the G7 recently met in England and um, they kind of G7 is group of seven and they came up with this entire idea that large corporates are escaping, you know, payments of their tax and you know, their tax obligations because they are registered elsewhere. You know, the profits go like, for example, a company called X. Let's let's not name any company. Let's company name a company uh, without naming any company. Let's call it X. X is registered in, in a place like Ireland. Now, Ireland has pretty low tax rates. Okay. Compared to what, let's say, this is an American company, but registered in Ireland. So, the tax rates in Ireland are low. And that's why it ends up paying very low tax on its total income in Ireland. If it were in America, it would have paid a higher tax. But it is located, the head office is located in Ireland for the precise reason that the tax rates in Ireland are on the lower side. So, and this also leads to a considerable loss of revenue for the United States government we are talking in this example okay that's also the case with a lot of countries around the world so these countries G7 the seven nations seven most powerful nations in the world at least on paper they are powerful these guys have come up with this idea that let's have a minimum of 15 percent of tax in America it's currently 21 percent the tax is 20 tax rate is 21 percent they are looking at making it 28 percent for American domestic companies American domestic companies 28 percent because from 21 they want to raise it to 28 but foreign companies they say at least 15 percent okay so I'm going to talk about this you know all these organ orga uh, no, organizations ah oh, let me put it in the right direction G7 you could write this group of seven most industrial and economically advanced nations economically advanced nations what are the names of these countries g7 okay next point uh united states Canada, I am coming in geographical order, United States, Canada, uh, because United States is further west, uh, western than Canada, there is Alaska, there is Hawaii, okay, so United States, Canada, um, UK, that is United Kingdom, and France, then, uh, you know, Germany, Italy, and Japan. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The only no, you know, no only Asian country in this grouping is Japan. So Japan was vehemently opposed uh, to you know the British Prime Minister's invite to India, South Korea, and Australia. These guys, you know, the Japanese government didn't want India to come. It's not that they didn't want India to come; they didn't want South Korea to come. Actually. But they couldn't be seen as opposing only South Korea's, you know, invite. So they said India should also not come. And, uh, because Japan also, it is also true that Japan wants to be the only Asian power, you know, in the G7. That's also true. Let's see. This is all, you know, old time this grouping worked. Italy is nowhere there. It's see the world's second biggest economy. You know, China is not in this list. The world's biggest, fifth biggest, uh, sixth, fifth, sixth rankings keep changing for India. In India's case, it's not there in the list. At one point, this grouping worked well, but no, no way. Okay, so this is G7. Let's write ASEAN, this one. We'll not write all, maybe. Let's see how. Association of association of Southeast Asian nations association of Southeast Asian nations hmm. 
Next. Um, see, the G7 doesn't have a head office or anything. Okay. H.O. Jakarta. Jakarta, as you know, is the capital of Indonesia. Then you could write 10 members. 10 members. You want to write the names of all the 10? Chalo, likhte hain kya khata kya. I mean, we don't lose anything. Na? We'll follow the geographical order. Um, one. You know, uh, Myanmar. Thailand. Myanmar is a member. Thailand. Three. Cambodia. Four. Laos. Five. Vietnam. Six. Malaysia. Seven. Singapore. Eight. Indonesia. Nine Philippines, ten Brunei, all ten. <laughs> hmm. If you know the geographical location of all these places, you can know that all these are there. Chika, chaliya. Anything else that we, I think we know about Sark, but so we wouldn't really, we shouldn't be bothered about Sark actually, but, uh, and we shouldn't be bothered about what is this, um, you know, uh, BRICS also, BRICS we know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, what, South Africa, yes, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Sark if you want to know, Chalo, I mean, we don't lose anything, Sark, um, what is that? Sorry, South Asian, South Asian Association, South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, for Regional Cooperation, for Regional Cooperation. Next, um, Head Office, Kathmandu. You know, this is the capital of Nepal. Eight members. Eight members. Geographical order. Afghanistan. Pakistan. One, two, three. India. Four, Nepal. I'll write here. Five. Bhutan, 6, Bangladesh, 7, Sri Lanka, 8, Maldives. Now that we are, we are done with 4, let's add the 5th one also. Hmm? SEO. Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Head office, Beijing. Sorry. <laughs> it should be Shanghai, no? isn't it? Yeah. Shanghai. Shanghai is, you know, is the biggest city in China. Eight members. India, Pakistan, Russia, China. Okay, four. Let's write the other four. So, one, two, three, four, five. Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, six. Kyrgyzstan 7 
Tajikistan and eight Uzbekistan. Okay. Cool guys, all fire come. The Reserve Bank of India has reappointed Vishwavir Ahuja as a managing director and CEO of the Dash for a further period of one year. RBL Bank. This is earlier it was called Ratnakar Bank, if I'm not wrong. Ratnakar Bank, now it's called RBL Bank. Um, you know, Bandhan Bank CEO. See what is this? RBL Bank's tagline Apnonka Bank. Apnonka Bank. So Bandhan Bank, Chandrasekhar Ghosh, Chandrasekhar Ghosh, DCB Bank, Murli Natarajan, okay, I'll write it here, Development Credit Bank, Murli Natarajan, okay, next, ah, Vishwari Ahuja here, City Union Bank, Dr. N. Kamakodi, N. Kamakodi, Federal Bank, Sham Srinivasan, Sham Srinivasan, Sham Srinivasan, okay. Antonio Guterres has recently been, that's a Portuguese name, so you pronounce this as Antonio. We normally say Antonio Guterres. It's Antonio Guterres has recently been approved uh, Secretary General for a second term of which organization? Of course, we all know the United Nations Organization. United Nations Organization. So we'll just write the chiefs of all these places, okay? This guy is from Portugal, of course, if you want to write Portugal. Hmm. WTO, well, what is her name? Ngoji Okonjo Iviela. Of Nigeria. Ngoji Okonjo Iviela. Okay. World Bank. The president is, so this is director general, this is the president David Malpass of United States, let me clear this now. IMF. The CEO and MD is Kristalina Georgieva of Bulgaria. Oh, Bulgaria has come twice in this class. We remember that uh, we discussed that, uh, you know, that Sumit Malik of, uh, you know, 125 kg category wrestler from India has been disqualified and he was in Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria, to participate in the trials. So that's where he was, his sample was, the urine sample was tested and he was disqualified later. So anyway, uh, International Labour Organization, International Labour Organization, the Secretary General is Guy Ryder of Britain, of UK. Of UK. Abdullah Shahid of Maldives is a new UN General Assembly President preference. Okay. Because previously there was this Turkish fellow and he was quite anti-India because Turkey is by definition anti-India. Turkey is rapidly pro-Pakistan. So it's it's always been anti-India. Uh, at least uh, ever since uh, the current president Recep Tayyip Ardohan, the G is silent, Ardohan came to power. 
you know um, turkey has been anti india and now he has been succeeded the turkish um, guy has been succeeded by a, you know a maldivian maldives is a close friend of india okay so which country would you want me to discuss you know pakistan bangladesh indonesia but maldives okay a kaam karte hain we write male that's a capital male and uh, ibrahim the president is ibrahim mohammed saleh maldivian rufia is a currency एक और लिख लेते हैं मलेशिया टू कैपिटल्स टेक्निकली स्पीकिंग कोला लंपुर एंड पुत्र जया पुत्र जया ठीक है पुत्र जया एंड इट्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज दिस गाय कॉल्ड मुहिउद्दीन यासिन मुहिउद्दीन Yasin with a double S, and the currency of this country is ringgit. Ringgit. Okay, I just would tell you that um, see when we talk of the UN General Assembly, it is the highest of the. In fact, it is one of the six major organs of the. Um, what are called the principal organs of the UN system. okay you have um, un general assembly un security council un secretariat un economic and social council then un trusteeship council yeah um you know these and of course the sixth one international court of justice international court of justice now you need to understand one thing here that all the members of the united nations are members of the un general assembly as of now the un has 193 members 193 members and two observers two observer states you want to know what are the one is the vatican called holy see they use the word technical name holy see but vatican and palestine rest okay so that's it guys so indonesia we learnt in the previous class so just skip it In the Asia Pacific states category which of the following nations have been elected to the UN ECOSOC for the term 2024 20, 2022 all four have been elected now what does the ECOSOC do in united nations economic and social council you could write this united nations economic and social council one of the six principal organs of the UN underline that dash responsible for responsible for coordinating coordinating economic and social economic and social fields economic and social fields of the organ the organization of the organization organization is un coordinating economic and social you know of you know what say fields of the un system that's a major thing you know so the un has 15 specialized agencies a lot of other bodies as well so the economic and social you know uh, the, the policies of all these organs you know are coordinated by this particular organization so typically it has, i think if i'm not wrong it has 54 members and uh, these four have been elected recently i will just tell you about one particular country here this country kazakhstan we mentioned it a while ago Kazakhstan is um, the capital is Nur Sultan. Normally, I don't think of all this before sitting for this session in this kind of session, but um, if I don't tell you, then I will feel very bad. Kasim Jamart Tokayev is the president of this country. Nur Sultan is the capital. Nur Sultan is the capital. and the president is kasim jamart tokayev and of yeah chalo and in you know, afghanistan's cap president is a guy called uh, ashraf ghani ashraf ghani 
वाइल ओमांस चलो ये भी लिख देते हैं ओमांस किंग इज हेतम बिन तारीख हेतम द सन ऑफ तारीख अल सैयद दट्स इज फैमिली सर नेम अल सैयद Water Burial, a film based on the Monpa dialect of Dash, won the two 2021 Best Film National Award in the Environment Conservation category. Now I was quite fascinated with this entire title, with the title of Water Burial. So what I did was look it up on the web, on the internet, and I found this. But before that, just write the director's name, Shantanu Sen, directed by. Shantanu Sen. Okay, so um, this is Monpa. Is a tribe. You could say the Monpa people live in Arunachal Pradesh at a height of about eight to nine thousand feet. Okay, an altitude of eight to nine thousand feet. Now, finding see these are very environmentally conscious people. They love the environment. They try to protect it. they do everything to protect they believe that what comes from nature should go back to nature and um, you know one particular practice of this community is um, i was fascinated and that's the subject of this film water burial what is this when someone in the community dies when a person in the community dies the body of the person the dead body is chopped into 104 pieces some sacred number i mean some ritualistic number there um 104 exochar pieces it cut into 104 pieces and then these parts of body parts are fed uh, into fishes in the streams around them amazing i mean what see nothing nothing should go waste what comes from nature should go back to nature so ultimately you know nature is taking care i mean look at the fishes are being fed that's the idea yeah and this is an amazing thing like for example if you look at tibet the altitude is very high so historically people there haven't found wood it's very difficult for plants you know to grow on the tibetan plateau so what they would do is to chop the body into pieces so that the you know animals uh, the birds so you know when we have birds like you know um, we have birds like um, eagles bald eagles especially eagles you know falcons they would come there and they would eat the vultures and all they would not vultures eagles especially they would come and eat the body parts so again goes back to nature yeah i'm amazing i'm fascinated with all these things not the subject of death but the idea that people should be should be so conscious of you know the environment around them and trying to do everything possible to protect it, protect and not the environment if you want the names of the chief ministers <laughs> since we are here pema khandu it's not related to the question but chalo likh lete hain the how in writing pema khandu the capital is itanagar and the chief minister is pema khandu shillong the beautiful city of shillong you should go here konrad sangma is the chief minister Andhra Sangma, Sikkim's capital is Gangtok, India's smallest state by population. Sikkim. Um, the prime minister is. Uh, I'm so sorry. The chief minister is. <laughs> the chief minister is a guy called. I'll write here. Prem Singh Tamang. Uh, you will some places you will find his name to be Lotte Sharing. Okay, P S Lotte. Otherwise, P A P S Lotte. That's also the other name of this person. Um, I think we're done. Yeah, Mizoram. What's the capital of Mizoram? Mizoram's capital is Aizawl, isn't it? We know this Aizawl. And the chief chief minister is Pu Zoram Thanga. Manipur. Hmm. What is that? Imphal is the capital, and the prime, the chief minister, sorry, is Biren Singh. Ah, Biren 
can see. In fact, it's really beautiful. Been here, so I can talk about these places. Which lending institution recently approved a $500 million program to boost India's micro, small and medium enterprises sector? Next session, maybe I'll bring in a little about MSMS definitions and everything. Hmm? I also remember that in one of the sessions I had told you that um, I would discuss the genocide in Rwanda. I will. Sometime, if not the next session, next week I'll discuss. Okay. Which lending institution has approved? Of course, we may just mentioned this 500 million program to boost India's MSME sector. Well, the World Bank has given, I mean, because the COVID has, the COVID pandemic has greatly, deeply, negatively impacted um, the MSME sector in India. Apart from the government of India's help, the World Bank has jumped in with its own fund. Well, um, we know about World Bank, so chalo ek kaam karte hai. European Central Bank headquartered in Frankfurt, Germany. Germany. Its president is what's her name? Christine Lagarde. Christine Lagarde. Christine Lagarde. Chika? That's the European Central Bank president, Christine Lagarde. She's from France. You remember you I think you can recollect her name with regard to the IMF. She was she's the ex MD of the IMF. Hmm? New Development Bank is, of course, uh, the also called the BRICS Bank, headquartered in Shanghai. And this is headed by a guy called Marcos Troizo. Marcos Troizo of what? Uh, Brazil? Yeah, Brazil. Brazil. We can also discuss uh, Asian Infrastructure Bank. This is headquartered in uh, Beijing and headed by a man called Jim Leakan of China, of course. Hmm? Not Jim, Jin, I'm so sorry, Jin, yo, yo, yo. Jin Leakan. Uh, Haitian Development Bank, Manila, is you know the capital of the Philippines, that's where the head office is. And um, the president is Masat Sugu Asakawa of Japan. Of Japan. The Interpol has launched a new global database named I'm Familiar to identify missing persons through family DNA and help the police solve cold cases in member countries. The headquarters of the Interpol is in Lyon, France. Now I want you to write something about the Interpol. What's the full form? First write full form. Interpol full form. International Criminal Police Organization. International Criminal Police Organization. Okay, International Criminal Police Organization dash head office Lyon, France, President Kim Jong Young, South Korea. Kim Jong Young, South Korea. We will not discuss the choices here. Hmm? I already mentioned the countries and everything. So, which Indian public sector universities has recently become a signatory to the prestigious United Nations Global Compact CEO mandate to work towards water conservation? NTPC, National Thermal Power Corporation. Um, this company is uh, Maharatna, and uh, the chairman. You want to write the name of the chairman? You could write. Um, this guy recently got an extension also. Gurdip Singh. Gurdip Singh. BHEL. Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Nalin Singhal. Nalin Singhal.
ONGC Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Subhash Kumar Subhash Kumar Subhash Kumar Sale Steel Authority of India Limited Steel Authority of India Limited Steel Authority of India Limited Soma Mondal Soma Mondal Gale Gas Authority of India Limited Gas Authority of India Limited Dash The CMD is Manoj Jain Manoj Jain Manoj Jain Chalo Next which country's parliament approved a, a giant artificial island name, named Little Arm that will uh, arm the H is the L is silent Little Linnet Arm that will house 35,000 people and protect the city's harbor from rising water. See, this is the capital. This is the capital called Copenhagen, Danish capital called Copenhagen. Okay, Denmark's capital. Now you see this here, this is the harbor, the port of Denmark. So this is rising, the sea levels are rising, so they are inundating the, not just the port and everything else. So the government of Denmark now wants to build an artificial island here. This is the artificial island. You see this line here? They are going to build this. The area is about what? About, um, you know, 2.6 kilometer square kilometers. That's it. They are going to build this that is going to house about 35,000 people and this will this entire thing here will protect the harbor that's the idea and also the low-lying areas inside so this will have a barrier and everything but the project is has found trouble with the environment list of this area and um, this is likely to be completed if it ever goes ahead by 2017 that's a deadline 2017 not now okay yeah denmark is a very tiny country very tiny country and um, you know what its prime minister is it's a constitutional monarchy so there is a rani here but before that there is a prime minister frederickson frederick uh, I K S E N, okay, Fredrickson, and the currency is Corona. I think we discussed all these countries. One more country we can look at is uh, Norway. Capital is Oslo. It's what uh, Oslo. Prime Minister, constitutional monarchy. There is a king here, okay. But before that, um, the king's name is Harald, Harald, H-A-R-A-L-D, Harald V, but that's not important. The Prime Minister is Erna Solberg, and the currency is Kron. Sweden, since I mentioned Sweden. The other countries are known anyway, so we'll just um, just clear this. Sweden, the capital is Stockholm. Not much is happening here, and so that's why I can restrict myself to only basic details. The king here is Carl Gustav the Sixteenth, but the prime minister, the prime minister is Stephen Lofen. And the currency is Sweden, no? Corona. The same as Danish currency, Denmark's currency. Easy to remember, actually. Hmm? Which country hosted the 8th International Nitrogen Initiative Conference recently? Uh, Germany. See, um, I was reading about this. I didn't no clue about um, this particular kind of conference. Never heard of it. But it's the 8th one, they say. So I was looking at this and I found that nitrogen, uh, nitrous oxide, for example, is eight, you know, it has, it is 300 times more 
environmentally damaging than carbon dioxide. It contributes 300 times more to global warming than carbon dioxide. I stunned to read this actually. You know, carbon dioxide is bad for global, you know, bad for the environment, contributes to you know, global warming. But nitrous oxide contributes 300 times more. And through this conference, they want to, you know, bring awareness about this and uh, of course do take some steps to reduce the damage. Okay. So that's about it. I mean, it was held in Germany, virtual conference. With which of the following countries has India signed an audiovisual co-production team to enable producers from both the countries to exchange and uh, explore their culture and creativity respectively? Well, uh, it's Canada. That's how I normally speak. But then Canada, the can of course, as a, you know, Canada is a huge country. Canada, um, the capital is Ottawa. It's a, the British monarch is the head of the, you know, country of Canada. The head of the state of Canada is the British monarch. Okay, so she appoints a governor general in Canada. The current prime minister, of course, is Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. Uh, dollar Canadian dollar is a currency. Canadian dollar is a currency, and it's the world's second biggest, second biggest by area. by area how big is it mm. 99 lakh square kilometers when i say 99 lakh square kilometers it will be 99 and 100 100 000 that is what 100 uh, thousand would be you know um, uh, not th 100 thousand thousand you know uh, thousand that is one crore so between 99 lakh and uh, one crore square kilometer area huge country mm. Population is 3.8 crore. Uh, I'll discuss only two more countries, Poland and uh, Cambodia. Cambodia is a Buddhist country. Uh, the name is said to from a, come from a Brahman prince called Cambodia. So Cambodia, that's how they call it, Cambodia. The capital is Phnom Phen. Someday I'll tell you the genocide here that happened between 1975 and 79, four years. There is a terrorist group here called the Khmer Rouge, which ruled the country, which killed about 31 lakh people. That's a lower estimate. The higher estimate is about 48 lakh people. Phnom Penh is uh, capital and uh, it's a constitution monarchy, but the prime minister is Hun Sen. This guy is a dictator. He has been here for about 30 years now. Yeah. Well, this is the currency. Poland. Warsaw and the president is Andres Duda Andres you will also find J Z both Duda and the currency is Zloty okay Chale. Not to discuss, but I'm sure I'm going to discuss this um, Cambodian genocide someday, and I'm going to discuss the Rwandan genocide also. The Indian Gas Exchange uh, has introduced an open auction trading platform on um, trading on its platform. Identify the correct statements of IGX, all of them actually. In fact, um, okay, IGX, Indian Gas Agents uh, Exchange, is India's first authorized gas. Exchange. What they do here is they help traders buy sell. Um, you know gas futures and gas uh, on the spot gas quantities on spot and in the future this is pretty much like the de derivatives market futures market okay that's it nothing else and uh, it works under the petroleum you can take this actually petroleum and natural gas regulatory board petroleum and natural gas regulatory board Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board Chairman very recently appointed Sanjeev Sahai Sanjeev Sahai Sanjeev Nandan Sahai but Sanjeev Sahai 
IEX is Indian Energy Exchange. That choice three, you see IEX, that is Indian Energy Exchange. Promoted by Indian Energy Exchange. The RBI is the terms governing um, a very uh, concerning overdraft facility. Um, I'm not going to discuss this. Everything is mentioned there, so all of them. This is not a question that needs discussion because when all of them is right and the language is easy, I don't really have to spend time, isn't it? Yeah. What is the name of NASA's Mars helicopter? We discussed it recently. A helicopter that performed a successful takeoff and landing on Mars, making the feed the first powered controlled flight by or, or by an aircraft over in on some other planet. Ingenuity. Ingenuity. You see the last, uh, see the other four: perseverance, curiosity, spirit, opportunity. These are the names of Mars rovers of US. Mars rovers. They go around the surface of Mars. So, rover, that which moves is rover. So, okay. Which of the following? Not which, it should be who among the following. Ay, 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 ay. Who among the following is good directors of the RBI has been elevated to the post of deputy governor? Ravi Shankar. Ravi Shankar. So, how many deputy governors does the RBI have? Usually, it's a governor plus four DGs, okay, deputy governors. Now we have Ravi Shankar, T B, sorry, T R S, okay, T Ravi Shankar, to Michael D Patra, it's Michael Devaprata Patra, but okay, Michael D Patra, three um, Mahesh Kumar Jain. Mahesh Kumar Jain and I think uh, BP Kanungo has uh, stepped down. Bidhu Prasad Kanungo, uh, not very, yeah. Uh, M. Rajeshwar Rao, M. Rajeshwar Rao, because in recently, about two months back, the other governor, deputy governor, Bidhu Prasad Kanungo, had resigned, had retired. So in his place, as you know, M. Rajeshwar Rao came and now T. Ravi Shankar. So there are four deputy governors of the RPA, all four listed here. FCR deposit for the non-resident Indians is not available in Swiss franc. So I'll tell you what is FCNR, then we'll wind up the class. Okay, I am sure this is the last question. I remember it that way. <laughs> so please write FCNR, foreign currency. non-resident foreign currency non-resident foreign currency non-resident underline that first point term deposit term deposit term deposit account term deposit account that allows that allows e sorry a l l o w s allows an NRI, non-resident Indian, to transfer, to transfer foreign income, foreign income to India, foreign income to India, in the same currency, as their as their PHEIR, their resident country, as their resident country. So uh, let me repeat, term deposit account that allows an NRI to transfer foreign income to India in the, in the, in the, in the, what to say, in the same currency as their resident country. So someone who works, let's say in um, UAE, UAE. UAE is Dharam. The currency is Dharam. So they earn in Dharam. They can use, they don't have to convert this into rupees, you know, while depositing in an Indian account. So the, if the account, if the deposit account is FCNR, they can simply directly deposit Dharams into that account. Got it? 
next point it is not next point it is not a savings bank account it is not a savings bank account dash dash it is a term deposit account it is a term deposit account with a minimum period of with a minimum tenure it's a tenure t e n u r e with a minimum tenure of 1 year and a maximum of 5 years and a maximum of 5 years full stop next point interest income interest income on fcnr deposit on fcnr deposit is not taxable in india is not taxable in india full stop last point both the principal both the principal and interest are freely are freely repatriable repatriable in foreign currency obviously in foreign currency foreign currency in foreign currency of the nris resident country of the nris resident country so you deposit their homes term has ended you can take back your money in their homes no interest is no no what we say um, no tax is to be paid on interest earned here and whatever comes in here absolutely not so these are available in canadian dollar australian dollar american dollar euro but not available in swiss franc okay it's a good one see when foreigners invest in this way we can use that foreign exchange to pay to 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 make payments in foreign currency thank you you've been very patient very very patient stay curious stay safe get vaccinated thanks for being here thank you so much